students in this session let's talk about capacitors so we'll be discussing in detail uh, about the capacitors from a layout perspective okay so we've come across lots of capacitors you know when whatever the designers use based on their applications so yeah so we'll take one by one and try and dissect them and try to understand uh, how they are laid out okay. along with that we'll dig into the other parameters and other concepts of capacitors as well so that we get a clear cut idea about what exactly is a capacitor what are these different kinds of capacitors we've been using all the while while we while we have been doing the layouts okay so the overall agenda of this whole session or discussion is we start we start with some basics of a capacitor over here so now we know you know most of them will already be knowing what exactly is a capacitor and how is it calculated and all of those things a little information about that and then we'll also discuss about device cap you know whenever you have a transistor over here it comes with uh device itself comes with own uh, capacitances so we'll discuss a little bit about that with uh, with respect to a planar device and when it comes to fin fits yes it's a three dimensional device and the gate is wrapping around uh the you know the channel all of that obviously those will add to a lot more cap so we look into those aspects as well just a, a little bit of idea about all of these things just to try and understand that is it just the capacitors what we use or the capacitances what we try to extract are those the only ones or is there anything else which the designers have to deal with okay and then we've got uh, different varieties of capacitances what we come across when we are dealing with metals right is it just the parallel plate capacitor or is it coupling capacitance as well or there are fringe capacitances how does a parasitic extraction tool extract the capacitances okay we need to look into that as well because that plays a very very important role uh, you know while running a post layout simulation if the extraction is incorrect then you know the results are incorrect now coming to benchmarking and evaluation criteria okay so when it comes to a capacitor be it uh, any of these varieties of capacitors over here Okay. how do you call it as uh, this capacitor is good you know you need to have a, a benchmarking for it you know so we'll study what are the criteria based on which the designers select a particular type of capacitor okay so we we'll look into those criteria as well and then we have these capacitors one is a mim cap we might have used this a lot but then you know the mim and mom we tend to get confused with the naming so mim stands for metal insulator metal capacitor okay so now we use a lot of you know sorry about that okay we use a kind of insulating a layer between the metals to create this kind of a capacitor okay so what is that how it helps in increasing the capacitor all of that we'll try to understand in fact we'll try we'll also uh, try and see uh you know try to learn how to create a mim capacitor as well and then we've got a mom cap which is a metal oxide metal capacitor okay which is again you know we utilize a lot of metals to to draw this okay as you can see this picture over here is a simple example of a mom cap okay so first we'll try to learn uh, what are the ways in which the capacitance gets extracted then we'll try to understand using a particular metal how can we create a specific capacitance okay there's a specific way in which you need to lay out the metals okay we learn how the tool uh, you know calculates the extraction what are the metal edges it considers for uh, capacitance calculation and based on that we'll also try to learn how to draw a cap okay and then we'll have a little bit of more understanding about a uh, ap mom cap as well okay uh, ap mom cap is a variety of uh, you know a variant of a, a mom cap okay we'll try to understand uh, you know what exactly is a ap mom cap what is uh, this vn cap layer and all of that okay and then we'll obviously try to uh, learn how to draw this okay we've got a uh, fringe cap as well you know these are different variants okay uh, how does the tool calculate for when it comes to a fringe cap okay now 
And we've seen a lot of decoupling capacitors while we are uh, doing the layouts. So what exactly are these? Where are they used? When are they used? Okay. And uh, what is the main reason behind using this? How does it help when it comes to dealing with the IR drop? Okay. What is a ground box? What is a VDD bonds? Okay. These are all the criteria we would be studying in brief and trying to understand how well you can utilize a decoupling capacitor to deal with all of these issues. So we'll also take a scenario wherein how to use it when it comes to a standard cell layout design, how, how de decoupling capacitors are used, and when it comes to uh, your analog designs, how a decoupling capacitor is used. And yes, there are variants of uh, you know decoupling capacitors. We will not be getting into detail of each and everything, but I think that will be more than enough to understand. And along with that, we'll also try and understand how a power mesh, whatever you draw for your power connection, how can that help you in decoupling? Okay, so we'll look into that aspect as well. Okay, so we 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 have got uh, uh, alternating VDDs and VSS lines, right? Whenever you're drawing a power mesh. How does that help? Okay. And finally, we'll also uh, see about PIP capacitor. Okay. Poly insulator poly. Okay. In uh, earlier technologies, we also used to use, you know, there were two varieties of polys. So using that, how do we create a, a capacitor? We'll look into that aspect, aspect as well. Yeah, I forgot this one. That generally, whenever we have to do a fill or whenever we have to add a cap, in the vacant areas of analog design. We just add decap cells, but along with that, to get a high cap, we also use a combination of metal cap and a device cap together. Okay, that comes as a P cell, or you can create your own P cell out of it. And you know, there are different variants of doing it. So we look into that as well. So they, these are all the aspects we will be studying in this session. So in the next video, let's take one by one and uh, you know, throw some light onto it.